calculate the normal force of a 5 kilogram box moving at a speed of 15 meters per second at points A and B shown below. So here we have the box. Now once it reaches point A, what is the normal force at point A? And what about at point B? Is the normal force going to be greater at A or at B? What would you say? The normal force is going to be larger at A because not only does the ground have to support the weight of the box, but it has to cause the box to turn upward, so it's, which is harder to do. So the normal force is going to be greater at A. At B, it's going to be easier because it's just going to fall off. But let's calculate the normal force at these two points. So at A, the normal force points in the upward direction, and we have a downward weight force. And the centripetal acceleration points in a positive y direction. Because as you can see, this is the circle. The centripetal acceleration will always point towards the center of the circle. So the net force in the y direction for position A is going to be the upward normal force minus mg. And the net force in the y direction, based on Newton's second law, is mass times acceleration. And what we have here is a centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. So to get the normal force by itself, I need to move this to the other side. So at point A, the normal force is the sum of the centripetal force and the weight force mg. Now I need to give you the radius of curvature. So let's say it's 2 meters for A and B. With that information, go ahead and calculate the normal force. So at position A, the normal force is going to be mv squared over r. So we have a mass of 5, a speed of 15, a radius of 2 plus the weight force which is 5 times 9.8 so it's 15 squared times 5 divided by 2 so this is 562.5 and 5 times 9.8 is 49 so the normal force at position A is 611.5 newtons. Now what about at position B? How can we calculate the normal force? The normal force is still going in a positive y direction and we still have a downward weight force. Now this is the circle. The centripetal acceleration is going to point towards the circle which means it's pointing in a negative y direction this time instead of the positive y direction. So once again, the net force in the y direction is going to be the upward normal force. It's going in a positive y direction, so it's positive, minus the downward weight force. It's negative because it's going in a negative y direction. Now let's replace this with ma, but the acceleration is negative, so it's going to be negative ma. Now let's add mg to both sides. So I have mg minus ma is equal to the normal force. Now let's replace the acceleration with v squared over r because once again this is the centripetal acceleration. So the normal force at point b is the difference between the weight force and the centripetal force. At point A is the sum. So at point B it's a lot lighter. In fact, if the vehicle is moving fast enough, the centripetal force could exceed the weight force. And if that happens, 
the vehicle is going to fly off the road, which is probably going to happen in this example. The mass is 5, g is 9.8, and m, that's still 5, v is 15, r is 2. So notice that we get a negative normal force. So if you get this answer, what it really means is that the normal force is really equal to zero. If the car is moving fast enough, it's not going to maintain contact with the road. Instead, it's just going to go off in a tangent, it's going to fly off the road, and it loses contact. If it loses contact with the road, then there is no normal force. The normal force is zero. It doesn't exist. And so you can get a negative answer. If you see that, it just means that the car, it's, it's off the road. That's what that really means. Now, it turns out that there's a maximum speed in which the car can maintain contact with the road. If the car goes too fast, it's going to fly off. So what is the maximum speed at which the car will maintain contact with the road at point B? How can we get that answer? This will occur when the normal force is zero. So at point B, the normal force is mg minus mv squared over r. So when the normal force is equal to zero, mv squared over r is equal to mg. You just got to take this and move it to that side. Now let's cancel the mass. So the speed is independent of the mass. So v squared divided by r is equal to g. And now let's multiply both sides by r. So v squared is equal to rg. So now all we got to do at this point is take the square root of both sides. So v is the square root of rg. So this will give us the maximum speed that the block can have or the box can have at point B without losing contact with the road. So it's going to be the square root of the radius, which is 2, times g, which is 9.8. So the maximum speed is 4.43 meters per second. So if the box travels at a speed that's higher than this number at point B, it's going to lose contact with the road. The faster it's going, the more it's going to fly off the road. So just to give you a visual illustration, so let's say here's the box. If it's moving at 4 meters per second, it's just going to slide down with the road. It's going to follow the curvature of the road. However, let's say if it's moving at 15 meters per second, it's going to lose contact with the road. Now let's consider this problem. What is the minimum speed that a roller coaster must have when traveling upside down at the top of a circle of radius 15 meters to prevent the passengers from falling out. So I want to make a distinction. So in the previous problem, we said at point A, the normal force is the sum of the centripetal force and the wave force. And at the top of a circle, the normal force is the difference between the weight force and the centripetal force. Now what we have is a vertical circle, but this time we have a roller coaster that is inside the circle uh, upside down. So what is the normal force in this case? And then how can we use that to find the minimum speed? For the box at the top of a hill, there's a maximum speed at which you can safely maintain contact with the road. With the roller coaster, if, it, if it's not going fast enough, the roller coaster could fall off. So it has to maintain a minimum speed in order to safely make the trip, not to lose contact with the, the tracks.
if it goes fast enough, it's gonna it's gonna stay on the circle. It's not gonna fall down. So let's calculate the normal force for this situation. Unlike this problem, where the normal force was extending in a positive y direction, in this problem, the normal force extends in a negative y direction towards the center of the circle. And the weight force is also in the negative y direction. And the centripetal acceleration vector also points towards the center of the circle. So let's write an expression to get the normal force, but let's make some space first. So the net force in the y direction is going to be the normal force, which is negative because it's going in the negative y direction, and the weight force is negative as well. Now the net force we know it's ma, but the acceleration is in a negative y direction, so we're going to put a negative sign in front of it. Now let's replace the centripetal acceleration with v squared over r. And now let's isolate the normal force. So I'm going to take this and move it to this side, so it becomes positive Fn. And I'm going to take this term and move it to this side, so it becomes positive mv squared over r. So for the roller coaster, notice that the normal force is mv squared over r minus mg. It's the difference between the centripetal force and the weight force. But in the other problem, at the top of the hill, the normal force is the difference between the weight force and the centripetal force. Notice the difference between these two equations. What is the difference that you see? Notice that this must have a maximum speed. And the roller coaster, in order to make contact with the tracks, it must have a minimum speed. Notice that the weight force and the centripetal force are written in the reverse order. In the first example, with the box on top of the hill, if it's going too fast, this term the centripetal force will exceed the weight force, and so you're going to get a negative normal force, which means that it loses contact with the road. Now, for this one, there's no issue if it goes too fast, because if it goes very fast, you're going to have a very high centripetal force, and so the normal force is going to be positive. If it goes too slow, the centripetal force will be less than the weight force, and so if this term is greater, you can have a negative normal force, which means that the roller coaster is falling down. So if you want to find the minimum speed that the roller coaster must have, the threshold is when the normal force is zero. If you get a negative answer, it fell. If you get a positive answer, it's still in contact with the road. But the threshold is when the normal force is equal to zero. So we're going to use this equation and replace Fn with zero. So zero is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. Now we're going to move this to this side. So once again, mg is equal to mv squared divided by r. And we can cancel the mass. Now just like we did before, we're going to multiply both sides by r. So we could cancel r as well. And so rg is equal to v squared. And now let's take the square root of both sides. So to calculate the minimum speed, it's equal to the square root of rg. And the same is true if you want to find the maximum speed at the top of the hill. It's just the square root of rg. But the max speed has to be less than or equal to the square root of rg. Here, if you want to find the minimum speed, it's going to be equal to or greater than the square root of rg. So you can represent it with an inequality. But the threshold is at this point. So now let's get the answers.
So we have a radius of 15 and a gravitational acceleration of 9.8. So the speed is going to be 12.12 .12 meters per second. So in order for the passengers not to fall out, the speed has to be less than or equal to 12.12 .12 meters per second, rounded to the nearest hundredth place. And so that's it for this problem. Hopefully everything makes sense, and thanks for watching this video.